here I am, guardian of the city. No evil shall escape my gaze. Now that we've covered the jaw-dropping episode Olivia and Yunin, it's time to break down the more lighthearted segment that coincides with the release of the new Spider-Man Away Home trailer, Spider Sprig. I wonder if the production of this episode was coincidental, or if Disney needed a TVA show to promote Spider-Man in any capacity. I'm feeling like it's the former, but you never know. As always, we're going to run through this episode for all the easter eggs and details you may have missed. And to stay in the loop of all things Amphibia during our Season 3 coverage, please be sure to subscribe to the Roundtable with notifications on so you never miss a video. With all that said, let's dive in. We open with a parody of Kamen Rider, titled Tarantulad, that may serve as some interesting foreshadowing for the end of the series. While I believe Amphibia will likely end with Anne being separated from the planters, no longer having access to Amphibia, the climax of this fictional film feels like it could fit the story of the show and how Sprig's arc rounds out. I mean, just substitute Tarantulad with Sprig for the following. After Tarantulad saves the day, his helmet falls off. Exposing his true identity to the public, the crowd of people around him are shocked that Tarantulad isn't a human, one citizen even dubbing him as a monster, much like how Anne was labeled a monster when she first arrived in Amphibia. While Tarantulad braces himself for rejection, a young girl approaches him with reassurance, stating she doesn't care what Tarantulad is. He's a hero. Hmm, sounds familiar, doesn't it? You're not a beast at all. You're a hero. An ugly, ugly, ugly hero. The crowd applauds his tarantulad. As the protagonist shares an inner monologue where he thinks of his late parents, informing them that he finally found a place to call home. Now, I wouldn't think much of it if it wasn't for the inclusion of dead parents. The idea of Sprig sticking around on Earth, where he embraces a crime-fighting lifestyle, feeling as if he finally found where he belongs, doesn't sound too far-fetched for an ending, if we're being honest. It leans more into the sweet of a bittersweet ending that I think the show is preparing us for. Also, while this is obviously a common Rider parody, you cannot convince me that Tarantulat's hair, cape, and color scheme isn't a nod to Chris from Deltarune. Come on, they look exactly alike! And the Amphibia crew definitely seems like the type to be fans of the Undertale and Deltarune franchise. Polly critiques the structure and writing of the film, which leads to Hop Hop more or less telling her to stop being chronically online, which was honestly a vindicating line of dialogue, even as someone who could harshly critique the things they love from time to time. Sometimes it's nice to just turn off your brain and open your heart when consuming media, allowing you to feel what you're watching above all else. Sprig is inspired to become a superhero of his own, leading to a homage of the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man film. Sprig watching slime come out of his hands and climbing onto walls, like how Peter saw spider hairs emerge from his hands. And if you ask me, the music in this scene and all throughout this episode is kind of reminiscent of Into the Spider-Verse's score, and the costume making montage is also a nod to the first film. With the alter ego Frogman, Sprig has a confrontation with local patrol officer Robert Otto, voiced by Brad Garrett. The name Robert Otto is a reference to both Garrett's Everybody Loves Raymond character, Robert Barone, and Spider-Man villain Dr. Otto Octavius, the latter of which the character is very much inspired by. Otto tries to stop an out-of-control bus from crashing, flying past a store that's a combination of Duncan and Boba, interesting choice, but Sprig is the one to ultimately save the day, using his tongue as webs, which may be a reference to the iconic train scene from Spider-Man 2. One of the passengers on the bus is named Molly Jo, a reference to Mary Jane Watson, who is also the granddaughter of Otto, which could be a nod at how a few Spider-Man villains have had direct ties to Peter's friends and family. Molly Jo's design, however, leans more into Spider-Gwen with the dyed hair. Switching over to the junkyard, Otto seethes over the public's adoration for Frogman, scrolling through social media where he encounters a recreation of the distracted boyfriend meme, which was just absolutely perfect. I don't care if it's references. I love all of these visual gags on Earth. Otto's troubles seem to be provided with a solution when he stumbles upon Cloakbox's severed arm, which of course fell to the ground after the robot was knocked into orbit by Anne. I was surprised to see Otto was just able to wear the arm like a gauntlet, but considering this is alien technology from another world, referenced by Otto's note of it feeling surprisingly light, I'm not really gonna question it. Sprig is showered in gifts by an adoring public, including pizza from a Lost Mario character and a game cue, uh, game pyramid? I wanna play that so bad. Unfortunately, Otto arrives to rain on the parade in an entire that looks much more like Doc Ock, which leads to a line from Sprook with absolutely hilarious delivery. Huh, it looks like Robert Otto. He said he hated me and was gonna get his revenge. <sighs> What's he doing here? Sprig and Otto's battle rages all over downtown Los Angeles, creating an immense amount of destruction in the process, serving as a meta-commentary on how many comic book films feature climactic battles across a city that typically results in catastrophic collateral damage, something that Molly Joe calls him out on shortly after, putting their battle to an end. Unlike most comic book films, Sprig and Otto actually work together to clean up their mess, and not just leave it for the poor construction workers to sort out. 
happy ending, I think. Molly Jill requests to see Sprig's face, but he refuses, triumphantly swinging off into the sunset. Coupled with the beginning of this episode, I do wonder if the planter's identities being exposed to the masses will end up becoming a huge moment towards the end of the season, which could include the return of Molly Joe, even if she just ends up being a voiceless cameo in the crowd. And of course, Otto is under arrest for trying to kill a kid and wrecking the city. I'm curious if this will have greater ramifications on the story. Like, will Otto's arrest lead to the robot arm being confiscated and pass into the likes of Mr. X and the FBI? Might be a long shot, but I'd love to see that happen. And that's the episode. And as always, I want to know what you guys think. How did you feel about this episode? Do you think we'll see that mechanical arm again? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or keep the conversation going over at Roundable Vids and at Ashik Vox on both Twitter and Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya!